Hi, I'm Catherine from Little Vicious Stitches Hand Dyed Yarns. Um, this is episode two. Uh, thank you for taking the time to tune into my channel. Uh, this um, podcast is um, about knitting and crocheting and hand dyeing. You can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. All the information um, for other sources I will include in the drop down box, included in the uh, show notes. Um, Thank you for tuning in once again, and thank you all for tuning in last week, uh, or rather watching the first or very first video for Little Vicious Stitches Hand Dyed Yarn. It was a an introduction to the channel, to who I am, um, what it is I do as a hand dyer. Um, I also showed um, a few colorways that I have in, um, in the online shop that I have, and um, spoke also just a little bit about myself, private life and whatnot. So if you're interested in that video, then um, go back and uh, take a look. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about finished objects first. So the first um, finished object I have today is the Change Your Mind Shawl by Counting Sheep. Um, the information for this I will include, like I mentioned, in the drop down box in the show notes. Um, this was a relatively easy shawl to knit. Um, there's a lot of garter stitch. There are also a lot of yarn overs so that, you know, in certain sections so that you get nice, a nice lace pattern. Makes also a really nice contrast. Um, I used my hand dyed yarn to knit this shawl in a uh, merino cashmere nylon base that we have in the shop. Um, a few of the colorways I used are, for example, the first one, this is our Pyretta colorway. The second colorway I used is our Garbage colorway, which is a colorway that was inspired by the album cover of the self-titled album Garbage. And the third colorway is our Locked and Loaded colorway, the original Locked and Loaded that we have in the shop. Um, I believe I used a 3.5 or a 3.75 needle for this. Um, it gave me also a very good gauge. It's already blocked and when you put it on, it also gives a nice amount of shawl without it being not too big. So, yeah. So the next finished object that I have, I actually have two finished objects um, that are socks. Um, because I always have a pair of socks on the needles, which I'll show in my works in progress later, you'll see. Um, yeah, I love knitting socks. Uh, socks were most, yeah, I'd say the first thing I ever uh, really learned to knit. Um, like I mentioned in the first introduction, how I got into knitting, um, I was totally blown away by socks. Um, knitting socks was just magical for me. And, uh, from that point on, um, no matter what it is I was knitting at the time, if that was a huge project or not, I always had a pair of socks on the needles. So these are the, um, as a, I call them the Starry Night Socks. Um, it's a vanilla sock pattern. Um, this is in our colorway Starry Night. I also have images of these socks on Instagram. After I finished them, um, I posted them. This is in our 100% um, merino sock wool. It's a super wash base as well. Um, it was also a really nice knit. Um, whenever I knit socks, I always start with a twisted rib or rather first I always start with a German long tail cast on and then I do um, a twisted rib for the cuff and um, for this sock, I used um, 2.0 needles or 2.0 millimeter needles. Um, whenever I knit socks, I always use that needle size because I really like my socks tight um, and also very, um, yeah, just organized and together. And um, I always think that it always gives like the most really uniform and straight gauge and I really love to do that with those. So these are socks that are going to be gifted. Um, like I mentioned, I knitted them up in our Starry Night colorway. I have a skein of that here. This is what our Starry Night colorway looks like. 
This is also a 100% superwash merino base. There's no nylon in it, really soft. So the next pair of socks I have are also a pair of vanilla socks. Um, I also do like knitting other pairs of socks that have more so of a, like a, a pattern. Um, but since, um, yeah, right now I'm kind of really into having something quick on the needles that I can knit up when I have a few minutes or when I'm waking up in the morning with a cup of coffee, a cup of, a cup of coffee, uh, where I don't have to think too much. Um, vanilla socks are really the best. So this is one pair of vanilla socks that I made. These are mine. Um, again, this isn't a 2.0 millimeter needle. And this is in our Cruella colorway that we have in the shop. Um, also, um, Superwash 100% Merino yarn. And just to show a brief picture of what our Cruella colorway looks like. It's this one here. So, okay. Um, my last finished object is, um, a cardigan. Um, I have been knitting sw sweaters and cardigans basically for the last oh, year or two. And, um, it's really been a learning process and, uh, some cardigans or pullovers really didn't turn out the way I wanted them to, or they didn't sit right or fit right. Um, but I'm really proud of this cardigan and um, I'm gonna show it to you, but I have to do a wardrobe change first. So one, one minute. So this is my Ronin cardigan by Dre Renee Knits um, in Brooklyn T Tweed colorway sap. Um, I will also post pictures or insert pictures in this um, podcast so that one can see the finished object pictures. I don't have a large enough, um, yeah, tripod um, to show it in full length, but I can show a little bit about the, or a little bit of the details that are in this cardigan. Um, this is what the sleeves look like. This is the collar. This is also the sleeve on the other side. Um, yeah, so every year when it's my birthday, I always treat myself to a project um in my ravelry list i always have you know like others um a queue where i think to myself like wow that's a really cool pattern i'd like to knit it at some point um and the rodent cardigan had been in there for a long time and i was somewhat intimidated by it. i thought to myself like oh my god it looks really complicated i don't think i could ever handle that and um about i think a year and a half ago i also started knitting the um the rift card or the rift sweater for my husband and uh i must have like taken that sweater apart a million times and i was so frustrated and i thought to myself like i guess i'm just not there yet for um patterns like this um because it's also issued from brooklyn tweed i'm not really sure how that works in terms of the editing or how they write it together with her or whatnot but actually i love all of andrea maury's um patterns and um i really find them also very easy but i just saw it was from brooklyn tweed and thought to myself like okay maybe i'll wait a little longer on that um but what i thought was really cool in the um pattern for the ronin cardigan was that they mentioned um, if you have any questions um, please send us an email and we'll answer you as soon as possible so um yeah i um had some leftover um brooklyn tweed sap um in the shelter base um left over in my stash and um i bought the pattern and i just started knitting um, and I got to a point, obviously, where I thought to myself, like, okay, I think I need someone's help now. Um, and what I did was, is I sent an email and they answered relatively quickly where they could help me further, um, figure out the steps. And they also gave a lot of good tips in terms of like, okay, you know, repeat this every sixth row and repeat that every four row, fourth row and whatnot. And, um, the tip that they gave me was really great to organize the rows, the decreases, increases and whatnot. Um, and, uh, I asked questions, yeah, at least five or six times and they were always so nice and said, don't hesitate. And, um, so that was also very comforting because then you thought to yourself like, okay, 
I can do this, I can do this. Um, and you know, it, there just was a lot of pressure in the back of my head in the sense of like, you started this cardigan and now it's possible you won't finish it because you can't figure it out. And uh, Brooklyn Tweed, their customer service um, for their patterns completely helped me with that. They took all my fears away and I was completely free to keep knitting on my cardigan and to, um, to finish it. So um, yeah, so I started it on my birthday and um, then I, um, yeah, I got to the point where I was starting to notice I was running out of yarn um, and we were, um, yeah, uh, coincidentally in Berlin um, that weekend or that week where I had my birthday and I went to Wollen or Wollen and uh, they were also really super there and helped me figure out a few more things with the pattern and whatnot. So that's kind of like the story about my, my cardigan. Um, but it's super warm, it's super cozy. I love wearing it. Um, and it also has, um, you know, stockinette stitch. It also has brioche stitch, which I think is really cool. Um, it's such a rhythmic, um, yeah, knit design or pattern. Um, and it's always in the really, yeah, I think, most complimenting spots on the Ronin cardigan. I'll show also a little bit of how it looks towards the bottom. This is then the pocket area. Um, and here on the other side is also the, the pocket area. And um, what you do is you basically knit the collar, knit down, and then you basically knit across, and then you sew the, um, the pocket edges on. So yeah yeah so it was a positive experience so um what am i working on currently i am designing a shawl pattern um oops i lost a few stitches one second um but i guess i'll start off small um a friend of mine asked me to dye up some yarn for her because she would really like to have a have a scarf um, or a shawl um, and she wanted specific colors and um, I said no problem no we'll do it and then she said and then I want a scarf like the change your mind shawl, uh, change your mind scarf that you have or shawl um, but I don't want the lace and I thought to myself like hmm okay um, how could I then make the shawl for her without lace? And she wants to like to change your mind, which no, it's not a problem. But I thought to myself, like, I think then I might have to be a little bit, yeah, on my own with my ideas, how I'm going to set up the shawl and um, go from there. And uh, I always thought to myself, like, oh, you could never make a shawl pattern. There's too much math involved and you have to organize a lot and but I thought to myself, like, everybody started somewhere, and this is for a good friend of mine. Just do it. So, um, I dyed the yarn from her. She requested several colors from the Venitas um, set that I have. Um, just to start off and show, um, I basically started with a, um, a cast-on method. I think it's the I-cord cast on method I'm not really sure um, where you basically have like a little you know piece and then it's just three stitches and then it goes um, it increases and then you turn it and then it increases again I guess I should have been better prepared I'll do that next time but I'll definitely include it in the show notes as to what it is I'm talking about at all um, yeah and then you basically keep knitting until it's basically wider and um, my pattern is basically um, comprised of increases and um, eventually it will also go to decreases. But I'd also like for it, first of all, to be a little bit wider, longer, really maybe, I don't know, maybe a length where it's almost like a, like a, like the, um, yeah, not the shape, but the length of like the Find Your Fade Shawl. I really love how that's almost like a kite. It's just giant, it's just ginormous. So yeah, so this is basically garter stitch. It's super easy. Um, I also thought to myself like it, to make a pattern where you can sit there and knit, you don't really have to think about much. It's very soothing, it's very regenerating. Um, and I think one can do that the best either with a stockinette or a garter stitch. 
So um, my progress keeper is from Super Super Miniatures. This is um, a progress keeper from I think at least three or four, it must have been like four or five years ago for Halloween. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, and the first colorway is our garden wall color, garden walls colorway. Um, this entire scarf is in a merino cashmere nylon DK base from our shop. Um, the second colorway is our Lionheart colorway. And then once I'm done with the um, Lionheart colorway, I'm going to go on to our Bloodlust colorway, which is here. And then um, I'm going to move on to our Dante colorway, also from, like I mentioned, our um, our Vanitas line. So, yeah. Um, the next thing that I'm working on is a pair of blueberry sock waffles by Sandra Turner. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, here I have it. This is, um, no pattern is really, really easy. Um, the, uh, stitch pattern, for example, is very, um, yeah, it's easy. It's fluid. It's ry rhythmic, but it's not boring. Um, and, um, it's basically pearls and knits. Um, and then one row is just, um, a break with knitting or with with stockinette stitch rather um and it creates a really cool three-dimensional pattern and it feels also really cool very stretchy stable um and uh for this i also used 2.0 millimeter needles my favorite and um like I said, I always do the cuff in a twisted rib and then, or a, yeah, cuff. And then here we are in the length. I'm almost to the part where I'm going to do my heel. And um, this is in our locked and loaded 2.0 colorway um, that I also currently have in the shop. I also have a skein of yarn of it here. You can take the, I can leave it on, but it's basically it looks like this. Speckles and gray contrast, purple, um, a magenta color. So yeah, and then I also have my stitch marker on there, which is a cookie stitch marker that I got from a friend for my birthday. I don't think it's from any specific maker. She got it from eBay. Yeah, so what else do we have? Oh, yeah, I Um, I am currently working again on my habitation throne. Um, I started it, I think, in April, May, and then um, I gave it a little bit of a rest. Um, what I think about this throw, um, it's just really great. It's I love the pattern. It's super easy. Um, it's optically beautiful. Um, there's enough uh, change up in it to keep you interested. Um, and it really was a push for me too, where I thought to myself, like, this is the perfect project for you to take all the random yarn you have laying around um, and basically use the rests from that to knit it up and to use it and to use it quick. Because, um, we all know we see that skein of yarn that we love the most and um, again, and then we knit a pair of socks with it or we knit a shawl with it and then the socks or the shawl only calls for a certain amount of yarn and then you have tons of leftover yarn and you don't know what to do with anything and then you have a super duper guilty conscious, especially when you buy the next skein of yarn you know you can't use or need. Um, so then I made it basically for myself where I said, okay, um, your habitation throw is for those little skeins of yarn or those little balls of yarn that you have left over and um, as soon as they aren't in use anymore like you finish your socks and you have this leftover you basically immediately put it into your um, habitation throw so um i knit up a few things with our balu colorway 
and basically immediately used it in my Habitation Pro, our Corella colorway, our um, um, garbage colorway, our locked and loaded colorway, and then um, I also got Patreon minis, which are the last three colors from a homespun house. Um, I'm not going to show the other colors that are in there because those are the minis for October and it's most likely not everybody has received them and I don't want to ruin it for you. Um, yeah, and all the yarn is, I mean, basically the yarns that are mine are um, all in um, merino cashmere nylon. Um, so with that, I have a nice, um, even tactile feel to the, the shawl. I mean, I don't really have much, yeah, I'm not really against using different bases and whatnot, but I think for things like this where you have like a lace pattern and whatnot, it shouldn't be, um, the bases shouldn't be too different from one another. So, um, yeah, so for example, I used my, you know, um, my uh, Py Pyretta colorway from my Change Your Mind shawl and the garbage and the um, locked and loaded and then immediately inserted them into, um, yeah, into the um, habitation throw. And then the colorways from um, a homespun house, I thought would also pretty pretty cool, um, especially since those come in minis and that's a nice little fest you can have when they come in the mail. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of a homespun house. I really love her yarns. Um, the quality is always mega good. And um, the way she dyes the yarn is really very artistically and visually pleasing. So I like it. Yeah. Yeah, and then I also have a stitch marker that's um, super, super miniatures and her Oreo cookie. So, um, what else do I have then to show? Um, I think that's it for all the um, works in progress and all the finished objects. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, dyeing yarn and what's currently going on in the shop. So about two weeks ago, um, new colorways came into the shop. We had um, the Vanitas line and um, also I think it was about a week or two before that we had um, the Terra Minis come in. Um, yeah, my planning is basically to um, keep building on the colorways that I provide um, or that I like to dye um, and the older colorways yeah, not all of them, but basically um, a select few um, to kind of let, let them phase out of the shop and then um, to keep only certain colorways. So our colorways like our Baloo colorway. I won't be dyeing this colorway up anymore. This is um, Baloo in our 100% Merino um, singles. I, I call that like our bulky. Um, and also our Birds of Paradise colorway will also be phasing out. There's From these two colorways that I just showed, there's still um, a few left in the shop. Um, a couple colorways that are oldies but goodies um, and that will be staying are, um, for example, our um, Femme Fatale colorway. I really like this colorway. This isn't a uh, merino cashmere nylon base. Really, it's really, really soft and has really nice speckles in it. Um, our guys like the sun. I will probably never give this colorway up because I love it so much and it's so much fun to dye up and um, it makes a really beautiful um, pattern when it's knitted up. So this is in our blue faced Leicester, so BFL. It's a little blowing out a little bit. Um, and this is in our 100% um, Superwash Merino base. So, and this one here was again, 100% um, Merino singles. So, um, another colorway I have in the shop um, is our um, Funfetti colorway. I really, really love this colorway. It's so much fun. Um, an explosion of speckles and um, nice contrasts through the blues and the yellows. 
also blowing out um but different favorite and then our electric slide colorway which also will be staying it's a tonal um this is in our 75 percent merino 25 percent nylon sock base um and uh yeah kind of has a neon feel to it also quite nice so um yeah those are all the colorways that are in the shop that are in addition to the new colorways that came in last week okay so um i'd like to keep going with what's going on in the shop um or what has been going on in the shop i spent um basically the, in, the entire last i'd say month or two months of the summer um, dyeing up um, 2020 yarn advent calendars. I had um, two calendars this year in the shop. Um, one calendar was comprised of um, 24 20 gram mini skeins in Superwash 100% merino yarn. Um, the color spectrum I used on that was basically a mix out of tonals but also speckled yarns. And the other advent calendar yarn I had, it was not the, let's just say 24 days of December, it was more so based on the advent Sundays, um, where I had um, four 50 gram skeins of yarn, um, including a soy candle from Recycled Light Germany. Um, so that basically took up most of, yeah, I'd say, the end of July, August, and then the, um, yeah, the beginning also of the fall um, where I was dyeing yarn and um, preparing everything. I have, like I mentioned, a small yarn business that I do basically everything myself. Um, so thank you everybody who was patient with me um, due to COVID and whatnot. Everything also took a little bit longer than anticipated. However, um, all the boxes or all the admin calendars have been successfully shipped out and um, are on their way to their happy owners. Um, this year, I will be doing an unboxing via Instagram stories where I will start on December 2nd um, showing each advent calendar skein or each mini skein for each day. Um, just to kind of show what the advent calendar looks like. So for any of you who ordered an advent calendar, please um, refrain from looking at my Instagram stories if you're behind in opening your advent calendar because I obviously don't want to ruin it for you. So again, if you're behind on opening your skeins of minis or your mini skeins, um, don't look at my Instagram stories until you're up to date. I will start with the first skein on December 2nd. Um, okay, so that was what was going on in the shop, and now this is what's happening in the shop the next couple weeks. Um, on November 22nd, I will be having a shop date that update that will be, um, basically based on Christmas, um, Christmas and Advent. So at that point, all the, um, Christmas colorways for the shop will be coming out. Um, more details in terms of like uh, what time everything's gonna happen I will post on Instagram um, this year I will have several bases in the shop I will have the super wash bases I will have the non super wash bases uh, merino um, I also have merino singles and I have DK bases um, which I, I always think is a nice touch to have um, during those winter months, we always like to have something kind of squishy and warm in our hands to knit something a little bit more substantial. Um, so the colors will be typical Christmas colors, but I also kind of like to throw some other um, touches of colors in there that are not always typically Christmas colors. Um, otherwise, in the shop, um, there's also a section of the shop, I call that the marketplace, or rather titled a wooden chest. Um, that is a spot for makers, regardless if you're a knitter or a sewer or um, a crocheter, um, where one can get certain things that basically, yeah, make our whole making ritual process a little cozier, a little bit more enjoyable. 
Um, and the focus is really on ritual. Um, I'm a big self-care person um, where I think to myself, like, my God, like, life goes so fast. Some of us have kids. Some of us have stressy jobs. But still, what remains is our love for making. And um, we forget very often about ourselves in terms of, like, okay, well, if everything's not possible, how can I at least insert little bits uh, into my daily life so that I'm a little bit more rejuvenated and a little bit more renewed? And so I created um, a wooden chest where um, I'm currently offering um, products from other makers um, within Germany, but also um, from the United Kingdom, from England. Um, and um, right now we have um, candles from Recycled Light Germany and um, wool washes, or rather um, soaps um, to wash your wool from Sauerland Seifen. That's a local um, hand soap maker here. And um, recently, um, I have um, a maker from uh, England who makes hand creams um, that are really, really, really nice. And they smell amazing. And when you put them on your hands, it doesn't leave anything greasy or after products where you just want to wash your hands again or it's not compatible with your, um, with your craft. You know, you can rub it in your hands and start knitting right away or crocheting right away and it's absolutely not a problem. So um, with that said, on November 22nd, like I mentioned, we'll also be um, stocking products from um, Skit Stritzy Handmade. Um, she has this year boxes um, that look like this. They're really very, I mean, you can't see the product that's inside. I don't want to open it up to um, destroy the box and the product for whoever purchases it. But technically, um, in this box, there's three scented hand creams and um, little pieces of chocolate from Lynn. So um, I um, ordered hand creams that are, one box is kind of like a fruity box. You know, I have like mango, strawberry, um, I'm not sure what the other color or the other um, scent is and then the other boxes I have have a scent like lavender or um, What's it called? I also use it. It's the uh, Yang Yang and Jasmine, which is totally amazing um, So this handmaker will be coming to the shop on November 22nd as um, a little celebration for the opening of our let's just say Christmas sh um, part of the shop um, in a, um, a wooden chest marketplace. So um, as I mentioned, other makers that will be in there are, um, or is uh, Zara Lenz Eisen. I use basically all of her soaps to wash all of my yarns after I'm done dyeing them. Um, the soaps are really great. They don't, they're not over fragrant. Um, they're very subtle, they're very soft. Um, and um, your yarn afterwards is also really soft and um, also smells quite good. So, and then the other maker that will be um, also um, offering Christmas products in the shop is like I mentioned from um, um, Recycled Light Germany. Um, we have here their rosemary, um, the rosemary soy wax candle, and their mistletoe. So, those will be our holiday scented candles in the shop. Okay, so that's um, basically all I have today to show. Um, I really enjoyed speaking with all of you today, and I hope that um, you also enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, the last time I um, did my video, I was super nervous. I'm so sorry if that seemed awkward or whatnot. But um, yeah, it's really, um, yeah, it's really uh, overwhelming when you think to yourself, there could be uh, millions of people watching you. Um, but I guess what was also comforting for me is I knew that we all have one thing in common. We have uh, making in common and knitting and crocheting in common and uh, we're always all interested in what the other one is making and working on. And um, it's basically the same thing via the YouTube channel. So after that, I was a bit more relaxed and um, a little bit more structured um, today. Obviously it's a work in progress and it'll always get better or maybe there'll be a day where it's not so great or whatnot, but I always do my best to um, make it as 
yeah, high quality as possible. Um, if you like this video, please give me a like, or if you'd like to see what's going on in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Um, otherwise, um, thanks for watching and um, have a nice Sunday.